We have to be in a play together is basically what we're manifesting right now. Yeah, okay, everyone. Yeah, that's true. But we're also doing this so people know not to cast us as love interests. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've, had a, we've had a secret nightmare that somehow, somehow someone wouldn't know uh, and we would be cast as lovers. So we're putting it out there. We're or we even have to audition that. together as lovers <laughs> and be like, oh my God, I'm going to screen test for this thing like Justin. And like, oh my God, I can't that's a nightmare. I am honored uh, to be sitting here today virtually with not only someone I consider to be an incredible artist and actor, but a family member. Um, and I don't say that symbolically, I, I say that literally. <laughs> Quite literally. This is very fun for us. And I think I, I think our parents are going to be very excited that we're doing this together. <laughs> it's, it's very fun that we're kind of in two of the same families now. One blood related and one netflix <laughs> related exactly so for those who don't know ashley and i are we've now confirmed our second cousins we just found this out last year Let, let's tell that story later a little okay, bit okay 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 i'm like more interested just because we both um had our next seasons of shows announced within a day of each other i'm pretty sure congratulations <laughs> I actually haven't, I was like, this is so great. I'm going to talk to him so I can tell him in person. So Justin is in the Umbrella Academy. I'm in Emily in Paris. But um, the last time we saw each other, I hadn't finished the entire season of Umbrella Academy. Um, and I recently have had more time when I came back to New York to watch all of the shows I wanted to see. Um, I don't, I guess we don't want to give spoilers away, but we kind of can because people can have just watched it already. But I'm so excited for season three because that, I mean, your last moment is <laughs> insane, not only because your hair. I am disappointed that it's taken you this long, Ashley, to finish the show. I finished Emily in Paris in two days, okay? I finished in two days. And it's now taken me three months to shoot to watch my show. <laughs> well, also no, it's because also your show is so much more intense. I'm I like get very invested. I love all the possibilities of where season three is gonna go for you because you've been so patient too, Justin. Like as another actor, I'm like he is so patient and so fully engaged in all of those scenes where you are just there and no one can see you and hear you, but you are. You're so additive to those scenes. I was saying in another interview that I feel like I've, I've really gotten really good at eyebrow acting because a lot of times <laughs> I, I wouldn't be able to speak and I just had to like look at someone, you know, and had to convey like... There were some really like, good eyebrow moves. I was wondering. Thank you. <laughs> I, would, I would wonder if like you knew when the camera was going to be on you because you'd have like a certain reaction and it'd be like the laugh of the scene for me, you know? <laughs> But the, the the scene that affected me most for for you was, and I think I think you already know because everyone has talked about it, is is the scene where you sing La Fille and Rose. And I'm oh. curious if if that was already that was always part of the original intention to sort of make Mindy this singer, or did that did they write that for you, or what what was the case? It it actually was written once I was cast. You know, I was, and I don't know how. Um, your your episodes are written and stuff but for us you know i was i think i was cast a week before i flew out to paris and i when we had our first table read we had drafts of the first i think two or three episodes but nothing besides that was written and so i remember after the first table read um i was on my way to the camera test with this like french driver who i her, her name is julie and i love her now but um, and Darren Julie, called me Julie. on the cell phone. <laughs> Julie, it's Julie. And um, he asked, you know, he and, and the first time I'd ever talked to him, he, he started by saying, I, I saw Mean Girls, I saw it twice and all this stuff. And and he, he asked me if I'd be okay if as they wrote the rest of the series, if they could put in some singing for me. I mean, first of all, it's so thoughtful that he even asked because I think, and you know, the first things that kind of went through my head is first of all, I, I mean, I love singing, I'd love to. And this is the longest time I'd gone without singing every day, you know? For me, I think the reason I love musical theater so much is because um, this, the songs all propel the plot. Mm. Um, and you know, you sing when words alone can't do any more of expressing for you. 
Um, and they always seem to deepen the relationships or like open up the character in a sense, which is why I love singing on stage mm -hmm. as a character. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, I just want to make sure it's not, um, it doesn't feel uh, self-indulgent for me, yeah. you know? For me, especially knowing it was a half hour romantic comedy, I'm like, anything that like pauses the story at all and it's not about Emily's story, like, let's not do that. And so I think when we got the Livy and Rose episode, um, because that was episode six, so we had really, we had done half of it by then and that was our third table read. And I think, I, I was just like, you know, and in the script, it, it's just one line of it, you know, it says, and then she sings Lovey and Rose in the park. And I was like, wait, what? Um, Cause that's something I would, as a person be so nervous to do, you know, but I, I love that what they wrote into it and with the backstory was that it really deepened her friendship with Emily. And it also gave Emily a way of supporting her because she had been such a support to her for like the whole time. Um, and you really got to see, the characters' vulnerabilities and stuff, and so I, I I really appreciated how they put that in. So yeah, long story short. No, that's a that's that's a beautiful story, and it just makes me think um, how I don't want to say frustrating, but I'm sure you've had to navigate because coming from Broadway and as this incredible singer, I'm sure there's been so many roles where it's like, oh, she sings, you know, Ashley has to be the singer, you know, and. And did you ever feel like you were being pigeonholed into this like bit singing parts and any sort yeah, of- Yeah, that's the other thing I was a little bit nervous about is I didn't want, not that it matters what other people think, but for myself, you know, I knew that I wasn't cast for my singing and every job right. that I've had up into that point, besides the play I'd just done, you know, like with everything involved singing. Yeah. yeah and I, I completely agree that what, with what you just said, like I felt like those moments when she did sing it, just, it was a window into her as a character um, and it wasn't just some random self-indulgent act just because of yeah. the singing. So I think it accomplished I, that goal, yeah. Well, another thing too is like, I think that it's funny because both of our shows aren't like laugh out loud comedies, but I think that you have some like, you're you're very funny, Justin. <laughs> you're a very funny person, you know? And like, and I live in a world of comedy and like life <laughs> as you, that probably everyone watching can tell, you know? So like, um, but you are so collected and calm and thoughtful, um, at least in front of other people. <laughs> and so I I'm wonder, glad, no, but, no, but I do wonder, you know, like, especially because we, and we'll talk about more about the second cousin thing later, because it is so crazy that we just ended up in a very, in, really in the same world and neighborhood of, in the industry, really. But like, where do you think that you, you have such an innate sense of comedy? And you know how that, like, even just the one eyebrow twitch or something like that, you have such a good relationship and handle on it. And I wonder if that comes from, because again, you are in a sense a Renaissance man too. You like do photography, you've been a journal, like all the stuff. And like, I wonder where that com. Have you always been funny? <laughs> <laughs> now, now you make me feel like I have to like say some jokes to prove uh, my funniness. Um, no, See, that was no. funny though. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. You know, I had this wonderful acting coach who always told me in drama, always try to find the humor and in humor, always try to find the drama. And I think, you know, those are um, what makes life real, you know, and acting real. It's like, there can be really dramatic things happening, but like, that doesn't mean we have to feel sad and dramatic all the time and, no. and on the flip side there could be funny things happening and yet we could still feel sad and and so um i've always tried to find moments of levity uh in, in all of my work and um you know fortunately i'm just surrounded by uh, a cast who's hilarious and who likes to improvise and when you're surrounded by these types of people who want to just explore and have fun um it's it's easy for the comedy to come out i know that some of your lines were also sort of improvised i i think i heard that um yeah. the what was it like the bone up the yeah i'd bone up petite him <laughs> <laughs> i mean that, i mean and that was i mean I, to this day i'm like oh my gosh luca i'm so sorry like that is that one and the like oh i'm super rich like all of those things you oh, know like one. i didn't know that one was that was literally one of my favorite lines of <laughs> really? but you know what what i will say is like improv is easy when you've had you, we have a good like guidepost of the character right yeah. like when you yeah. when it, you two with um ben like 
having such a defined point of view for the character, you know exactly who to be looking at and how to be doing it and what to, so much can be said with something. Um, and for me, you know, I, you know, coming from the stage, you don't improvise lines on stage unless like a mishap happens and you like push the burn book into the pit and you have to like make something up, you know? But like, I, um, like those are so fun. Cause it's also, you know, you, you do a couple takes of like the actual ones. Like how much do you, do you guys improv on that set too? And like every set's so different. Absolutely. I think that was like one yeah. of the first things that Steve Blackman, our showrunner sort of gave us the freedom to do. He was like, you know, Obviously, please, please do a couple of takes with the lines as, as yes. we're and then, uh, and then you guys can have a couple of goes. But at you it. can tell, especially in the second season, that, that I think that your relationships are also vivid, right. um, and you've all found such different colors. So it's really fun, and also knowing three of you so well, it's fun to watch you guys like your instincts of different colors that you would bring like come out. And I think, again, I think we're both very lucky in that. I mean, you're you have such a you guys are literally all siblings on your set, but like as you've seen with my, like, we we're just so, so close. And I think for me, it was easy because Lily and I, you know, she comes from the film world, I came from the theater world. And so we're both like very perfectionist when it comes to like the technical elements. Mm -hmm. So then, so we would always be like over prepared and then come in, it would just be like playtime. Um, and so like those lines would, I mean, the Bon Appetit one was actually a mistake. Like I didn't mean, I didn't, I didn't know what I was saying. And I, you know, it, like you could say it with anything. Like you could be like, I'd air pod him. Yeah. Or like, Ooh, I would cup of tea him. And it like, really, you can do it with anything. And so I was just trying to mimic him. And then I realized that's why I like that. And we like that cut because they kept the take where we were just cracking up because I, I can't believe I just said I would bone him. You know, <laughs> like I love but. it. Um, I'm yeah. curious if it was a like a conscious decision for you to transition more towards film and TV from the stage or if just these opportunities sort of presented themselves and you kind of took them as they came. Yeah, um, I was in Mean Girls for about a year and um, I loved that. I loved that show so much. But at that point, I, I think that was I left in March of 2019. So is it 2020? Yeah, last year. Um, and You've lost all months, track of time. I've lost yeah. all track of time. <laughs> um, and it was actually a really, really hard decision for me because when they asked if we wanted to re-up the uh, contract, I was like, of course, you know, as a theater actor, to have a stable job, of course I would, let, let, me, let me keep doing this and then I can, you know, but uh, while I was in Mean Girls, I had filmed Tales of the City and so, and I, the only other TV experience I had before that I did during Sunday in the Park with George. So I had never gone to do a TV I, uh, a show by itself. Like I'd always film from five to whenever and then go to the theater and do the show at night. Um, and so, and I, and I loved that. I was like, great, two jobs. Like it's fine if I'm spread thin, but um, my team was actually kind of like, you know what? I think it's, you're not going to, you, sh you should feel confident in yourself to like open up yourself to the universe a little bit. Um, and so that's why I don't think it was, so I don't think it was a conscious decision of like, I don't like theater anymore. Like I'm going to do TV and film, but it was kind of like, you know what, I've gotten artistically what I can from this. And I, and like you, you know, um, we just want to like keep growing and learning so much, um, especially in an industry where there's just like an infinite amount to learn. And like, I really didn't, I hadn't had much experience with that medium. So um, I kind of just took that leap of faith and I left the show without a job lined up and then things came to fruition from there, you know, but um, I'm really glad I took that leap of faith, but I don't think I would have taken it on my own because mm. we get um, not, it's not even that we're comfortable, but I just, I get so happy wherever I am. So I'm like, mm. it's fine, you know, um, but I really do love, being on screen so much and it, it it was interesting doing Emily in Paris in the middle of doing the same play and playing the same character before it and then I went and, and I did it again after the same play and being a different person and also having that screen experience it made it a totally different way of um, interacting with the theater you know so can you elaborate more on that that's so interesting like what well, what did you bring into that theater experience I think that for so long, 
as if someone came, who came from the theater, I was told, you know, on screen, be smaller, be smaller, be subdued, mm -hmm. be subdued. Mm -hmm. It got to the point I really didn't get very far in any auditions or anything. And I was like, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to and and eventually I think my agent told me what what is going on because you're so animated and you're so warm in real life and then it look it's as if you have this like filter over you or you're muting mm -hmm. yourself and I was like oh I thought mm -hmm. that's what I was supposed to do once I took took that off and was like let me just figure out how these characters lay on ourself like myself a little bit and bring myself to it um it started changing and I think the misconception at least for me was that theater you have to be bigger and bolder and on screen you have to be more um you, you do have to be more precise on screen for sure because you're you're playing for one audience or there's one you know a, there's a lens that's capturing you versus like a whole bunch of people right. but um i found that the more if the intention is strong enough on stage the more nuanced you are is just as moving to the people in the back row and um you can have as much color and spirit as you want on screen too, you know? So it's, it's a, in realizing how different the mediums are, I've, my approach to each of the characters is exactly the same now. Just as you're asking, how did I make the leap from theater to acting like you? I think it's so incredible that you went to Cornell for what is it, government and what was English? What was it? Yep, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, did I get it right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Am I your biggest fan? <laughs> You're just my family member. <laughs> I have to, no, but like, I think that's so incredible. And that, like, to, to pave your own way like that, can you just tell me a little bit more? And we, we've gone over it a little bit, but not really in depth of like, when you really decided that act the storytelling through acting is what you wanted to do and how you pursued that. You know, in the same way, though, that you were talking about sort of the transition from stage to film and like when you look back, it makes sense. Um, yeah. You know, when I look back now, I can connect the dots. But at the time, I had no idea what was happening or what I was doing. But <laughs> absolutely. Um, you know, I went to Cornell and I thought I was going to go to law school and which is why I studied government. And um, the only reason why I thought I wanted to be a lawyer was because I enjoyed public speaking. Um, you know, uh, I always make a joke because like the stereotype is that these like Asian kids grow up playing the violin or the piano, but like for whatever reason, our family, like we were in speech competitions. <laughs> Wait, really? All of your yeah. siblings, like, you and your siblings? Yeah, yeah, me and my brother, we were in these like intense speech competitions from a young age. Um, Whoa. Yeah, yeah. So, so I just wanted to make speeches. And so I thought, oh, lawyers make You'd a lot of speeches. You'd be an amazing speech writer. <laughs> I mean, don't do that now, but like, yeah, yeah. Keep it. Uh, very quickly, I realized like that wasn't for me. I, I had done a couple of like legal internships and law internships and I realized, no, this isn't for me. And then I thought I was going to do like international development work. So I spent a, a bunch of time abroad, which is where I started to like fall in love with writing and thought I was going to go into journalism. And again, I realized like that industry and sector wasn't for me, um, but I what I did take away from that, those experiences abroad was like the power of story, right? You know, yeah. I think just like listening to does people. That. Yeah, absolutely. Opening up your world and then seeing, you know, uh, the world through different eyes, uh, through mm -hmm. these people. Um, so I came back and uh, graduated college and had a bit of an existential crisis. <laughs> I was like, you know, I don't want to be a lawyer. I don't want to work in international development. But what I do love is storytelling. I do love public speaking. Um, I do love being on stage. Um, and for whatever reason, that just like was like, this kind of sounds like acting. So had you never done it? Like when you say be on stage, you meant just like with speech competitions. Yeah, and I actually had taken a, a theater class in college to get rid of one of my general requirements. What was um, it? It was just a, it was just like a theater 101 class, like an acting 101 class. Did you like it? I loved it. I loved it. Oh, yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. And it was the first time, Ashley, where I felt like I walked into the class and I felt like, oh, maybe I have a natural knack for this. Um, a natural which is okay. not, Isn't that so crazy? Like natural yeah. wirings, like when you realize your body or your brain is wired for a certain thing, you're like, wait, what? Yeah, it's like it's like when when I would walk into my chemistry or biology classes, my friends would just like they would get it and like they just like retain the information and I would be like I don't know how you guys are understanding this, but then like I would I walked into that theater class and like we would get a script or a play and I just like immediately understood character and the story and yeah. you know 
it just like was like oh this is something for the first time i feel like is 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 part of me um so i came back to that experience and was like maybe maybe acting is it and uh so so that sort of began my journey you know i i feel like i've had a very slow and steady um journey you know it was not like some i don't wait it really yeah slow and steady well i mean i guess it's just because i i met you right when <laughs> yeah yeah okay <laughs> to, to, to be clear to be clear i was struck i was struggling and poor and starving for six years prior prior six? to you meeting six and a Wait, half because you moved yeah. to la okay and so like during that time though like also actually you, you do realize i'm much older than you no you're not <laughs> okay i'm a few years older than you i'm a few like years two right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mercedes, yeah. <laughs> so I'm 91. When are you? <laughs> oh, we <don't... laughs> oh, we're only one. We're only one. We're only one. Oh my god! <laughs> are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding? Me I thought right I now? thought You're it was more. So older I thought it was more. Actually, I you do realize more. I'm much older than you. Wait, you're 30, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm only a year younger than you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're just like, I just carry myself so much older as you know. Okay, but like, you know, so it wasn't that, but you know what's so funny is like, time is such a, is a construct and such a perspective thing too. Yeah. And like, I mean, I feel like I, like, you know, I, when I first moved here, I did like six, six months of just like waitressing, all this different stuff, auditioning yeah. and everything. And like, at the time I was like, oh my God, I'm doing it, you know, but like now people are like, so you graduated and you just booked a Broadway show. And to me, it doesn't feel that way. To me, it feels like a whole lifetime, not because it was like grueling or anything, but I don't know you. It, it Cause, cause you, you, you were doing it. You were doing it. Wait, I'm not done age. with you. Wait, I'm still, I'm still on you right now. <laughs> Hold on. Cause I'm like, I need to get this straight in my head. So for during those six years though, you were auditioning, you found an agent and stuff. Like how did umbrella Academy come from that? Cause that was your big yeah. thing, right? Yeah. yeah. It was, it was very gradual. It was like, I, I genuinely went step by step. So like, I moved here. I love that. Um, I, you know, spent like six months just like figuring. I, I, I think I googled like how to become an actor in Los Angeles, <laughs> and I think I got. I, I, I think it's. This still is the my, inspiration story right here. <laughs> I think I still have the book at my parents' place, but I think I got like acting for dummies. You know, uh, remember those books? Um, Do those work? No, no, not oh. at all. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, I that's and then so I got my very first like commercial agent. I booked my very first commercial, and then like uh, a few months down the line, I finally got a theatrical agent. I booked my very first like one line on a CSI show, and then I Love got it. my like second like bigger, slightly bigger role, and then I got my first guest star, and then and then Umbrella. So it was it was genuinely like very gradual and when i say gradual i don't mean like it was this it was like a lot of this of as course, you know course. yeah no but i love that i think i had a very similar experience in terms of um j the steps of the biz the steps of the business you know like in that way like i i'm so grateful that my first show was in the ensemble of a long-running show that i've been running for seven years in mama mia um as an understudy as well and then like, I really consider every show that I've done, like my freshman, then my sophomore year and junior year, not like demeaning any of the lower ones, but because I had the least amount of pressure on myself there. Yeah, and yeah. you can really learn the ropes and you really understand so that when by the time you're a series regular and you're, like, even then the fact that you were in season one, you're what it was recurring, right? And mm -hmm. then they um, made you into your series regular. Like there's something so, I mean, I'm, that must have felt so wonderful because when you, when you've earned it in that way, you understand and are not that people who get certain steps right away are not grateful, but there is a certain of like, I really understand the magnitude and like how, just how grateful you are for each step of it, right? 100%, you know, I've heard it said that like, if you stay in this business long enough, you're gonna catch a break. Some breaks come early for some people and some breaks come er uh, later. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm super thankful, as you said, that my break and our breaks came a little bit later because it just means that much more and we understand the significance. Whereas 
I've unfortunately had friends who who had their break at the beginning, and you know they just think it's it's just going to keep going up, and that's not necessarily always the case. It sometimes right. you get some big thing at the beginning, and then it's slow for a number of years. But we've already been through the slow, so we're like we understand that, and we right. can brace ourselves for that. Yeah. And not even like slow, but like in terms of being a centered enough person, you know, as we become, I mean, I guess we're adults now, right? But like, as we become- Yo, Sadi. Take out, character media, take out all this stuff about the age, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we both need to we both need to be playing high school until we're 40 so take no, out the, take I out just, the stuff about me no the last two things i've done brought was a high schooler and then a pregnant therapist in her 30s so i don't really know but um but it's it's that you know it's a funny like when i did the, the with the king and i um i was the uh, top tim is like a does a lot in that show and i and i bled and sweated and cried on stage every night times a week for over a year and a half so like 500 shows and at that time like I'm just so happy that and grateful that at that time you know I was the only lead that was not recognized in any way in terms of awards and all of that stuff and so j just I I'm just so glad that certain parts of my career have come when I've understood like what what is important about it mm. And even now, like with Emily in Paris, it's the thing that made me so grateful was not every day was not just like, I mean, it's a Darren Star show. It's a, like it's it's everything that you a dream role would be, but it was that I couldn't believe I was doing it with people who I actually really loved and cared yeah. about. Yeah. I was like, that is the most important thing, you know. And I don't think I would have felt that way three years ago, yeah. um, or I would have known to really understand that and appreciate that. So I think that. I'm so glad it happened in that way. I'm, just, I'm curious now that we've both been through it, how how that moment was when your show premieres on Netflix and it's suddenly immediately available to 190 countries around the world. I, I like, like still don't really understand it. <laughs> like, I guess you're more used to it because this is your second season. But yeah. I think it's also like, I mean, I it's, it's so bizarre for us because it happened in a global pandemic yeah right so yeah. when people ask how it feels or anything it's not it's 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 amazing but it, you know you i feel all of a sudden connected to the whole world but it's also like I, there's no tangible i'm not grappling with it at all you know yeah. like we're yeah. doing all of these like zoom things with people who are loving this show and of course their social media interaction and, and that and especially the the global thing it, it was so it's just so crazy to me too because i've you know, live theater, I've, I've maybe done like thousands of shows now for maybe hundreds of thousands of audience members and I have nothing to show for it. That's mm. the point of like theater is that it's mm. supposed to be that one moment with like the alchemy of those people and that audience for that one night and you just can't reproduce it even if you film it. And so it was just so, it's so wild to me still that like, cause we both like, I, we're nostalgic people. Like I love having a time capsule. I'm like, oh my God, like everybody can see this, this perform. It's so crazy. It's yeah. so, so crazy to me. Would you ever uh, do theater? I want to know more about, and I want to know about your movie. Yeah, I don't know uh, a lot about it. Yeah, I'll, we'll get to that. But yes, okay. in a heartbeat. I, I've done, I've done, uh, some some theater here in LA, but like not obviously at the scale uh, that you've done, but absolutely, it's, it's a dream of mine. And as you said, um, there's just something so powerful and, and moving about that moment and this tempor temporality of that moment with a, with a live audience. So uh, I'd love to dive back you in. You have to do point. a play, especially yeah. now that I don't think I really um understood like that your passion came from like speech giving yeah and like that yeah, kind of, yeah. you, you are built for play also because you are so smart and i think that there's this like the well i think you know like i think like when i get nerdiest is when i get like a play script and like and doing a show for a long time too like deep yeah. getting to like deepen these characters but not like widening them like not within the confines of what the show is that you built or whatever but like really getting to discover different things and going with different things. Like, I just feel like you would so thrive in that. We have to be in a play together is basically what we're manifesting right now.
Yeah, okay, everyone. Yeah, that's true. But we're also doing this so people know not to cast us as love interests. Yeah. So, <laughs> we, we've had a we've had a secret nightmare that somehow somehow someone wouldn't know uh, and we would be cast as lovers. So we're putting it out there. We're or we even not have to audition that. together as lovers and be like but like audition and like go through all the rings of it and be like, Oh my god, I'm gonna screen test for this thing like Justin and like oh my god, I can't <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, well, you give up the job. <laughs> um, I want to go back for a second because uh -huh. before um, before I knew you were my second cousin, I knew of you, of course, because this really? Mean Girl, yes, this Mean Girls thing oh. was such a huge uh, moment for the community, not only the Broadway community, but the Asian American community because to see someone who looks like them as this iconic character was huge um and i'm i'm just so curious to hear um how you felt and if if that motivated you or that felt like a lot of pressure or what the response has been uh, from our asian american community i'm gonna be super candid a little bit just because i think that in this past year with all that's happened we've really gotten to kind of reflect um and i've gotten to figure out too how I can move forward intentionally as an Asian American actor mm. um, and also realize the personal growth that I had to do as a person before um, feeling up to the responsibility of that mm. and where I became complicit as an actor in the theater world because I think that I had internalized, I didn't even realize it until maybe like, I don't know, you know, I, I internalized that success was making everybody think that I was white. Mm. is making everybody forget that I was Asian. So if I could go into any audition room, any workspace, any rehearsal or anything, and people would forget that I was Asian, then that was a success. And often that, and you know, it was different for all Asian shows, but like that was often when I would, that's really how I excelled yeah. and made my way. Yeah. And, and that's really because the the industry, you know, the it's archaic in that like the stories were written by and for, uh, written for to be watched by and like written to be performed by not people that look like us, right? But it was something that I, I never felt um, burdened by. I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be the Asian girl that plays all the white characters. And I, but I never mm -hmm. thought of it, I don't know. So I think that with, Mean Girls especially, I, I was one of the last people, I would think I was the last person cast in it. And again, you know, it, it, for different reasons, mostly because I hadn't been able to be seen for a comedy for years after The King and I, or for a mm -hmm. year after King and I. Mm -hmm. And I, the shows I had done before them were much more classic musical theater. So I, again, even though I was finding so hard not to pigeonhole myself, I had pigeonholed myself, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so I never even considered that, I was so excited that Mean Girls was happening because it's my favorite movie. And a lot, and some of my friends were in it, but I, it was, it, it all, it all, ha it, it's, it feels very predestined in a certain way or like fate because I would have never guessed it for myself and I had to be open to it. I was so happy that with the character that we built, with the Gretchen that we built, it felt like every person related to her and that especially a lot of young Asian Americans like could see themselves in her, but it was more important for me as an actor selfishly that every person related mm -hmm. to her. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just a voice for people who looked like me. But what I realized when as I left the show and even now especially, is I was like, you know, having a character like Mindy in a Darren Star show, and when we grew up on Friends and Sex in the City and all white cast, all white cast, all white cast, right? And I in turn, I really, I, I never thought about it. I was like, oh great, like I wanna be like all these people. Mm. You know, and I didn't missing myself because I was just trying to think forward and think positively and like, how can I be like these people? Yeah. And so when I think about if I was younger, especially and saw someone like me on on this as a plastic on the Mean Girls poster or in a Darren Star show, I, I just I don't even know what it would have meant for me. But I hope that I think the trap that we fall into is my big hope was that when little Asian girls see the Mean Girls poster, they're not just like, oh, great, that's an Asian role I can play. I'm going to go for Gretchen Wieners. Like, I think that's the, the trap that we're falling into, too, is that I grew up being like, oh, maybe I could play the best friend. I could play the villain. I could play all these things, but I can never play the protagonist, you know? And I, I hope that people, when they see this 
those things are like, oh, that means I can play any part in that show or mm-hmm. any part in any other show. And so now I do, I, I do, I'm, as you are too, so honored to have that kind of responsibility. You know, it's, it's, it's a really interesting time. Yeah. That's, and how that's do so you, I mean, how do you feel in that too? Because it get you know, like right now, especially with like the rise of, k-pop and like parasite coming out blackpink and bts being the two biggest bands you know and like i'm sorry like have you seen your instagram like you are just like a, like a hollywood leading man handsome you know like no you're like i'm sorry like i'm telling you very objectively because now i'm your family manager too but like <laughs> but what kind of responsibility do you feel like you know and and, and you filming this movie too like was that and you, i don't know how much you can share about the movie you just did with Colin Farrell, right? But um, wh- about that character and how that differs. Well, first about, uh, about the movie, I think one of the things that I really appreciated most about the movie was that um, though there are elements of like Asian identity um, imbued in the script and in the movie, that's not what the movie is about. Um, and I think those stories are absolutely vital, you know, stories Mm -hmm. about immigration and stories about um, the trials that, you know, our community has faced uh, with regards to racism and things like that. Um, And yet in the same way, I think we also gravitate towards stories that feel a bit more universal, that feel a bit more like anyone, anyone could play this. Um, And yet I happen to be Asian. And that's one of the things that I appreciated about this script that, Though, of course, I am Asian and I'm playing this um, robot in the movie, that that's not what the thing is about. Uh Um, And uh, it was just such a joy and pleasure to dig in uh, in that way. And at the end of the day, the story is about a family, you know, and and to be a part of that, uh, especially with someone like Kobo Nada, who is the director, who's someone I've admired for many many years um Mm -hmm. and we could we could talk about representation behind the camera as well because i think we both understand how important that is right like right we can talk about asian american representation in front of the camera and how we've progressed so far in that way and it's great to see more visibility um but it still is lacking behind the camera with our producers and our executives and our directors and so it's it's nice to be uh, a part of a project that can start to bring in that next wave of Asian American filmmakers who are just like creating these incredible stories and and things that are so personal to to each of us in our communities. Yeah, yeah. and universal and thematic too. That's so, wait, uh, wait, you said something. Oh, about stories that are, yes, like, um, aren't about the, race, aren't, a, but, aren't a, about the Asian-ness itself. But include it. Well, this, and that is what is so interesting now, I think, and what I had, like, like I was supposed to do Thoroughly Modern Millie, um, and we're still working on that new script of that show. And, like, I, I realized that for so long, my goal was to, again, erase the Asian-ness and mm. make people forget. And now it's about making sure my Asian-ness is part of the narrative. Mm. And, like, they, they're, they're seeing the person that I am, whether they're seeing the vulnerable, they're seeing everything that I wanted them to see of the character, but also in your like also showing them that I'm Asian. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a perfect example is like, you know, we take off our shoes when we enter a place, right? And that would mm-hmm. be normal for an Asian American character. And yet that doesn't have to be like the focus of that scene. It doesn't have to like zoom in on, on the, know, sho- the person <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. taking off the shoes. It's like, it's just natural. It's part of who we are. It's the character. Right. And I think that's uh, the kind of storytelling that I, would hope our, our community continues to like gravitate towards that, like just normalizes these things. Like we're Asian and we are living in the States and this is who we are. A lot of that is right. from our culture and our parents, but a lot of that is what? just being a normal American as well. And it's also like, especially being an Asian American too, and the generation that we are, there's an entire, there's a new generation of um, the perspective of it. Right. So like a lot of us, grew up with parents or grandparents who had that certain cultural, um, like, like for example, even Mindy and Emily in Paris, you know, I think that at first, I think a couple of years ago, I would have been like, oh, I don't want to play this. I don't want the stereotypical story of the parents with the pressure and all that different stuff. And I actually was like, no, that is completely 
what a lot of what a lot of people's experiences are, and also it's not about being Asian. She's she's a really wealthy heiress, so that's a lot of pressure from any you know community or any any culture at all. But I realize that it's it's the perspective that Asian Americans and people, especially in our generation, the one under us, can carry now. Whether it's like with humor, or it's or it's with a levity, or it's with an understanding and a respect for that part of their culture, and also the way that they lead life and like go through life now. Like it doesn't have to be. There doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be antagonistic in that sense, too. I think it's so interesting about like stereotypes, and I understand why so many in our community are against that. But as you said, you know, this idea of like parents putting pressure on their kids, it's it's real.、Um, but I think the problem with stereotypes is when that is the only character trait, you know,、yes. that the character has, right? So it's like I know that people don't like Asian American. Characters to feel like smart or nerdy, and yet that's like a lot of our community. You know, I'm I'm I consider myself nerdy.、Um, yeah. But it's like if that is the only thing that defines them as a character, absolutely. But I think we have to be okay with like having characters who get pressure from their parents are smart, but like can still be fully formed. Um, and have well, per- yeah, no dimensionality and to that. It's the reality、yeah. of it too, and it makes it more personal. I think that's why we grew up. Like I, I remember like very vividly, especially in middle school, like purposely starting to answer questions wrong, purposely starting to like not want to do well at the things that. And and my, you know my my parents were 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 not like the stereotypical like. A lot of pressure; those kinds of parents, you know, and like I played piano since I was five because I loved playing the piano, and I practiced、right. one or two hours a day growing up. And I, I most of my adult friends have no idea that I played the piano, and I can't even really play anymore, you know. But like, it was something that I was like, "This is ev- like Asians are supposed to be good at this, or they're already good at." So we, we, we negate qualities that we have. Um, because of the imbalance of what we see, because that's the only defining thing. So I just am reiterating that's completely、yeah. true. I think that's so、yeah. true. It can just be part of that. Right. Wait. We, right. Sh- should we? I mean, we also haven't covered that.、Um, I-, I just think it's fun to share that we really only met each other last year. Yeah, I was just going to was- say that. Yes, it is true that we are second cousins. It is also true that we only found out that we were second cousins a year ago. A year and a half ago. A、yeah. year and a half. Ago. It was right after I left Mean Girls, so I came to LA to do Jessica's pilot or something, and I was at our. Fr- we met through our friend Emmy River Lampman, who who's, plays who's Allison Hargreaves on the Umbrella Academy, and is happens to be one of your best friends from Broadway. And、um, I was going to visit her at her house, and she was like, "Oh, my friend Justin's going to come." And I think what ended up happening was around the same time too, because I had mentioned to my mom that day that I was going to Emmy's house, and your show had just come out, I think, or yeah, about yeah, a month yeah, before. Yeah. And my mom, being how she is, she was just so excited. She was like, "Oh, I'm going to look up the show. I'm going to Google that show and like look up Ashley's friends." And、um, she saw that because also your your character was a secret. Yeah. And so there's yeah, yeah. a lot of stuff about. Justin Min is in this show. It was kept a secret this whole time. She was like Min, because Min is a. I don't think I've ever met another Min. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we only have one family tree in 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 Korea. So we are. If you are a Min, you are somehow related in one shape or form. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to take over from there? And so. So your mom started to connect the dots and and realize, oh my gosh, I think. This is your second cousin, and then she went through her archives and found photos of her own wedding, where my <laughs> older brother was a ring boy, and then she. And I grew to... up. <laughs> I grew up looking at these photos of、yeah. his older brother as a little ring bearer, like on my family wall. And then, so your mom started texting you photos. You sent those photos to Emmy. Emmy sent those photos to me, and as I was driving to Emmy's house, I'm just getting photos of my childhood and my brother, <laughs> and I'm like, "How do you, how do you have these photos? What, what is happening?" Because、um, Emmy didn't tell him that, and I mean, what, what we think is so hilarious too, <laughs> oh my god, is that first of all, 
as an Asian American actor, I think people are always like, oh, do you know this person? Especially like Parks. Like, yeah, do you know yeah. this part? Are you related? Yeah, yeah. And you're like, no, it's no. And like, I just can't believe. So our, our parents are cousins. <laughs> like, it was so wild. And Emmy was just like, we all like were in her backyard. And she was like, this is so crazy yeah. that we've ended up in this like same circle. And it was before yeah. I even got Emily in Paris. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like, then it was. It became a fam. It became a genuine family reunion at that point. And then, right, and like I think you had your parents thought I was an opera singer. I think we really because my parents we moved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They thought and, you were pursuing an, a classical operatic career. Because um. <laughs> we had moved from California. Wait, I, I, wait. Actually, really quickly, I do want to ask. How did you keep that a secret, the Umbrella Academy thing, when you were filming season one? Um, I was afraid for my life. <laughs> I was afraid that if I were to reveal it, like I would be fired. From no, but show, like, I, so. no, I'm, I'm logistically wondering, like, who all did you lie to? So my character's name was like completely secret throughout the shooting. So even the crew members. Um, when they referred to my character, like shooting that day, it would be like a different character. So like, it was like Jake or Rebecca, <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. When I auditioned for the show, it was like a completely fake uh, character audition scenes that I was working with. I didn't know who I would be playing until I actually got to Toronto. And then they finally revealed that I would be playing a sibling. So everything was shrouded in secrecy. I'm just like, who did you, what did you tell the people in your life? I said, I think I booked a show and they want me to fly out to Toronto tomorrow. And I think it'll be a fun experience. And I think that's like literally. How uh, long, how long were you there though? In Toronto? Yeah. Like five, five, six months. Wait, so like everybody was like, oh cool. You're going to be gone for five, six months. And so you just lied about what was happening. You were just like, oh yeah, you wouldn't tell well, them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at a certain point I, I was able to tell them I was on a Netflix show. Right, right, right. But you could right. Yeah. That is so crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jo I mean, that's what you mean by like the slow burn because that the patience of that, I think would like, that just shows so much character. <laughs> In character media, there's your plug. <laughs> and that's a wrap. <laughs> that's a wrap. <laughs>